So today we're looking at the DJI Mini 3 Pro and we're looking at the receiver but don't forget guys if you've got your Mini 2 or your Mavic Air you can use your controller on that. I will do that in another video but at the moment we're just concentrating on the on the controller that's got the screen itself. So we just go through a few things. So we start from the top. So we got the uh, photo button. This is the camera, and obviously you can change it over to video. You got your controller for your gimbal, your zoom. Don't also forget that at the top here is where your antenna is. It's built into the controller itself. We then go to the bottom. I'm not too sure about these. Now I've got a feeling that these is going to be used for a lanyard. That the better go around your neck. These will be the connectors, but I'm not sure now, so don't take my word for that. Now in here, which is a bit of a fiddle, I must say, you can put another uh, SD card in there. You've got another PowerPoint. You've got your PowerPoint to uh, power up your controller. And then if you look on the back of the controller itself, you got the place where the two um, sticks are placed. You got your C1 and your C2 controller. Now you can set these up how you like in the settings. You got your air vent there to keep the thing cool. On the front of the screen, we got obviously the control sticks would go here. At the top here is your LED light to give you show you how much power you got. Now when you first turn it on, it'd be red. And as soon as you connect up with the drone, it will go green. You've got your home point, your pause button. In the center here is your normal mode. So to the left, it is cinematic. To the right is sports mode. And obviously the power on button. So what we do now, we'll just power it on. Now you can see what I mean by the red light. Because I haven't powered up the drone yet. And what it's doing, it's going into the fly app. But before we go into the fly app, I just want to show you a little bit more on the screen that you can use. So if you scroll down from the right hand side, from the top there, obviously it's still loading up at the moment. Here we go. So now on your left hand side, it's all about your SD card. Um, obviously there's a card built, there's storage built into the controller, but with the extra SD card, um, it's just for extra use. Now obviously you'll be collecting the filming off from this uh, which you can use for, um, especially if you say for instance you lost your drone you could use it, look at the footage that is stored on here. You'll find obviously anything that you do on that drone will be stored on here. Uh, I'll show that later on. So at the top there you've got your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Air Mode and Mute. This is the record screen button and if you want to take a screenshot, then you've got brightness and obviously sound. Now, my brightness for showing you guys is just um, halfway. If you, as you can see there, you won't notice a lot of difference, especially when you're doing it indoors. Uh, and obviously, even when you're outside. But for the moment, I've got it on halfway. It's got a time at the top there. Now, if you want to go into the settings on this, you just go to the top corner there. Shows you the network, connected devices for your Bluetooth storage, compass system, uh, other instructions and compliance information. So if you go into storage, so built into the controller, you've got 5.71 gig, well, what's left, 8 gig. And then I've added my SD card. Uh, as you can see on there, I've got 31 gig on there. At the moment, I'm just using the internal storage on the card. If I wanted to, I can go into that. Um, if I wanted to format it, that's how you format your card. That's that done. So we're going back into the main screen now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the drone and we'll have a look at the settings. So just turn the drone on. And hopefully within a couple of seconds, it will just click straight in. It's gone green at the top. 
So this device is already paired up with the drone. I'm just gonna turn that that way slightly. Um, obviously it didn't like it like that. So down in, in the left hand corner here is your altitude indicator. Now I use this mainly so I can see which way the drone is flying. Now if I tap on it, it will go smaller. It, I can either use my map box if I want to. I don't tend to use the map box. I prefer to use the altitude indicator myself. It, so it just gives you an idea of the direction. Obviously at the top here, you've got your M mode. If you tapped on that, you can put it into sports mode if you wanted to, but also it would just show you uh, location. Here is your how much power is left in your battery. You've got a signal, which obviously you expect it to be really strong. you then got your satellites. I'm going to go through the settings in a moment. And just here is your settings for your drone camera. So you've got photo, video, which is on at the moment. You've got master shots, quick shots. Uh, hyperlapse and pano over the other side you've got normal and you've got slow motion so we just clap on that not disappear here is where the camera will tilt if I can just show you the demonstration so there it is gone vertical now obviously this is you will be used mainly for saying good use it on Instagram and Facebook and things like that uh, I'll just put it back in the other way. Underneath it is your zoom. Now, at the moment, I've got one on 1080, so I can get the full time zoom. We've got autofocus down at the bottom here, also tells you about storage. So I've got um, a total of, all oh, right, 1.2 there, but on my main storage, I've got 56 gig, which is plenty enough. Here is uh, the video settings so you can have up to 4k if you want to i tend to use always 10 1080 1080 full hd and 60 frames per second that's my preference what you want to set yours to is up to yourself um, the only, only reason i have it on at 60 frames is that when i'm doing software um, when i'm going to edit i should say i can slow it down or speed it up and you don't seem to get any of that jitter in and obviously next order is the EV. If I just press on that. And it, you can mess about the settings. I, I don't tend to mess about any of that. So just knock that off. And then here in the corner here, it's on auto. So everything's you know, like uh, white balance and things like that. If I tap on that, and it's gone into what you call professional. Or really it's the manual settings for the camera itself. Something else I don't bother with. But for those camera buffs, or photography buffs, I should say, this was probably something that they love going into, especially if you should be messing about with ND filters. So i just put it back onto that. We will now go into the settings. So the first one at the top here, um, we're just going through the safety side of it. Now, with the avoidance thing, um, at the moment, it should always be on break. So when it comes up something close, it will stop. If you don't want to use that, obviously you can turn it off. But what I'm going to use mostly now is this bypass thing. Uh, that'd be interesting to see how that goes. And here, it's all self-explanatory, really. Maximum altitude, uh, limited distance, return to home. I think 328 feet is enough. Now, obviously, as you can notice straight away, I've got mine in feet and inches. That's how I deal with it. I'm just going to reset that there. Now, obviously, all these settings are your own preferences. It does, you don't have to follow these settings. It's what you want it to be. But I would say the return to home, you want it at least to be about 300 foot. Uh, and then you've got sensors and about if you want to do calibration. Tells you all the information. Find the drone. Then you've got advanced settings. So we come back to the controller or the control. Now, I've got it in, obviously, Imperial for measurement. Subject scanning. And then we go into the gimbal. If you put it in FBV mode, what's going to happen is the camera's going to lock. And then you've got advanced settings. 
I don't tend to mess about with these sort of things. And then on the back of the cap, on the back of the controller, we saw the C1 and C2. Uh, and I think most people tend to tend to go for the recent of the gimbal to re-straighten it. And you've got the portrait and landscape mode for switching the camera from um, normal or to vertical. Uh, and then we got camera itself. Uh, we're on about the, the format. I usually do, do mine in MP4. Color and normal, if you want to do it in decent, you like. And then you've got the code in. Uh, you've got anti-flicker. I've got it on auto. Histogram. I think it's a good, good thing to have, so I'll put the histogram on. Uh, if you also notice, I'm not too sure about the peaking level, so... <laughs> Miss me on that. Guide line, grid lines, I think that's a good idea. I'll put the grid lines on, but as I'm demonstrating a lot at the moment, I'll leave that off. White balance is on auto, and then we've got back in the SD card. And this is another thing if you wanted to, you can format it on here as well. Uh, and then we've got about the, case, the cache, I should say. Uh, transmission, some, I don't really know. I'm not even going to explain it to you guys. But it's there for you um, geeks out there. And about, obviously, if you wanted to, we can check up the updates on here. Um, and what I will do, I'll just check, I'll just do quickly, because it does look like there's a new update already that I've got to, um, I'll just do a quick check. New firmware available. Okay, so what we'll do, we're going to update that now. So, uh, do not close the app, and it says it takes around about 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place the drone to there so it doesn't get messed up. back right so you just seen that obviously um, it is pretty hot so it's turned itself off so I'm going to see go back into it and see if it's um, cooled down a little bit now I did hear this is one of the things that's been happening lately it gets a bit over Heated, especially when it's um, uh, doing updates. Find my drone. So that's just in just uh, a demo on that would happen if um, I lost my drone so we stop that okay I've got 77 percent left on the battery which is good so as always guys hope that's been interesting if, you, if there's anything you want me to go over please let me know I haven't gone through the whole thing admittedly there are other videos out there and I think there's a great video channel called DM Productions and he's he really goes into it. But for me, I'll just go through the basics of it, give you some idea. So, as always, fly safe, guys, and I'll catch you on another video.